Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday morning, and it's 63 degrees out here on the Alabama Gulf Coast. I'm Rachel, and I'm gardening in Zone 9A uh, for butterflies and for myself. And um, it's been really misty this week, and uh, but it's been in like the 60s and the 70s, so it's felt incredible. And I'm just going to show y'all a few things that have been happening in the garden. I've discovered that whatever rose that I have that is blooming the most at that moment is my favoriteest rose. And so, of course, this gentle Hermione has been going just nuts because I was almost dug it up, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait until all these buds open up and they're just so delicious, just beautiful. They smell incredible. Um, I have some kind of weird something that was on these, uh, the petunias that were in these pots. And I've got some new um, pansies to put in there. So I'm going to do that today. And right here, this is one of the roses that I um, dug up. And it bloomed a few times and then I cut it all the way down. And look, it's already growing back. Oh, and I want to show you the Cecile Bruner rose. It's so incredible. Apparently, you cannot kill roses. I had no idea, but look at this. I cut that all the way back and look at it just coming up. I hope that I can maintain it a little better this time than I did last time because that got kind of crazy. You know what, I'm just gonna creep around here. So I had to rescue a few things this week. Oh, I just hit my head on the um, bird feeder. <laughs> um, I rescued this lemongrass. I don't know if y'all have lemongrass, but this one grew from a seed in the yard and I was going to leave it there, but armadillos came along and dug around it. So I've dug it up. Now these things love living here and they get huge. I've got some in the front yard that are like 10 feet tall and six feet wide. So they like to live here and um, I enjoy them. So I, uh, I'm going to plant some more around. I have a lot in the front, but not any in the back, really. And this uh, summer romance rose, just growing like crazy, but I don't have any blooms on it yet. They come out on the ends. The carrots are doing well. I had one pulled up and chewed to bits. I'm guessing it was probably a raccoon that did that. And then I did video something. There's some kind of strange white fuzzy stuff that's on some of my, I can zoom in right here. I've got more examples of it, but it's really gross. And so I've had, had to cut back a few things. I think it's some sort of um, bug that's doing it and leaving like this white spittly thing. But I can show you a close-up of that, and maybe y'all will have seen it before. Look at this Desdemona. It is about to bloom again. Oh, and I wanted to show y'all the uh, Supertunia, Bubblegum Supertunia, that I ended up having to cut back. And look, it's, um, it's growing back. So that is really cool. It's going to have carrots all around it. And this is where the carrot depredation happened. You can see... It chewed and it didn't even eat all of it. Look at that. It just left a lot of it. It wasted it. Wasty raccoon. The bog garden looks like some weeds are growing in there. So everything else that I planted is still alive, but I just don't, I don't want them to get crowded out. But I wanted to show you, I need to rescue this um, monarch caterpillar because it has fallen off the milkweed and now I don't know where he thinks he's going to go. I've got a bunch of monarch caterpillars on this little stand of milkweed right here that is behind the bog garden. There's about five or six of them and they have just decimated this little milkweed stand. In the potting shed, I still haven't gotten anything to dress these drawers up a little bit, but I rearranged them. I thought, well, maybe if there's some stuff kind of poking out of them that'll look better so I did that and these are the pansy seedlings that I'm going to put in those pots in the front everything seems to be surviving so far and I took more cuttings 
I took a bunch of more cuttings of the uh, salvia leucantha and then I did two per container of the passion flower vine so far they seem all right this one the leaf fell off that one the leaf fell off. I don't know they look like some of them are gonna make it but we won't pass judgment yet everything else is looking pretty good in fact I think I'm gonna have to pot some of these up into a bigger container because look at that there are already these these are the ones these right there the ones that look at that that's crazy um got roots coming out of the bottom so these ones that one that one that one um and then these right here are the ones that are taken from this and this thing is two in one container and this is a 20 inch pot so i know these things are going to get gigantic i mean gigantic so i'm excited about that i'm gonna need to get more bigger pots oh yeah um i went to lowe's the other day and they had these pots on sale and this is i think this is a 16 inch pot and they used to be like 30 dollars, but now they're 15. so they got blue and they got this turquoise color um at lowe's i got a few of those and i was going to show y'all some of my seeds that i'm planning on planting if you order from botanical interest your seeds come in this really cool box and that's probably how they justify like the ten dollar shipping but i don't mind because um i like having them in this isn't it just cute so i've got a bunch of seeds y'all know i'm not really good at planting seeds so these are all just all my hopes and dreams these i think i'm going to plant soon because i think they like to grow in cold this ammy green mist and of course foxglove no telling no telling if that'll do rue y'all rue i'm excited about that and then these are things that I've never planted before. Okay, well, I have plants, obedient plant, but I've never planted them. Jupiter's beard, never heard of it. Tried to grow this last year, nothing came up, but it just looks so cool. Zulu Prince, Cape Daisy. Now, these I have grown quite a bit, Love in a Mist, and I usually just throw the seeds out in the yard. This is something new for me, Blue's Blue Daisy. Mm. Calendula, I, sometimes it works for me, sometimes not. And I think it probably needs to grow now in, uh, while it's cold. This, look at that. Is that not cool? Aster, tall pompon blue moon. I know zinnia will grow here, so I'm excited about these. I'm, I just throw these out too. I don't try to start them as seedlings. Phlox, I want a jillion of these because phlox smells so good. I didn't even know that. Stock purple not sure what that's going to be this ooh these seem to grow everywhere in like british gardens they grow them along their steps and around rocks and stuff that looks just so fun aster snapdragon i don't know if i can grow that from seed but we will see hollyhock oh yeah this one um gosh what is her name uh i think it's jerry from hop along hollow she had some of these and they looked so pretty and she's in this somewhere in like a you know i'm not sure i know it's the south though so i'm hoping that maybe i can grow those and of course these are going to grow like gangbusters uh ruby moon hyacinth bean i've got some more nigella that's um um love and a mist so more zinnias some spice bush basil Still, this I've tried to grow before and it didn't work out. So I don't know. Hey, and you know what? I have actually grown salvia from seed, this kind of salvia. I threw it out one year and it came up. So that's kind of a miracle. Uh, this calendula, isn't this a pretty color? Mm, excited about that. Never grown this from seed either. Milkweed, kind of not really, ooh, I'm losing them. Not really, um, it's very hit or miss with the milkweed. When I try to grow them like in a, in a little uh, tray, they never do. But when I just throw them out in the yard, that's when they like it. This, oh, I have wanted to grow mul mullen or bascom for a really long time. So I'm hoping that that will come up because isn't it gorgeous? And then more zinnia. I've been wanting to grow this for a long time, millet, because I love the color of it. And um, my husband never wanted me to buy it because look, see, it was $6 for just 25 seeds. He kept saying I could go down to the co-op and get like a pound of it for, 
a dollar, but I never did. And I don't know if that's accurate, but he, he said so. Yarrow. Um, you know, I've started this from seed, but it's never flowered. This is some sunflowers that they just gave me. Uh, Thai basil. This is super easy to grow from seed. You can just throw that out in the yard, um, which I will do. Lemon balm, super easy to grow from seed. Alyssum, I had this last year and it did grow from seed and it was just so dainty. I'm excited about growing that again. Never grown beans. I'm sure they're easy though because beans. Now squash is really hard for me to grow because everything wants to eat it. I want some bok choy. I want to grow that. So we'll see if that's possible. Armenian cucumbers. Mm, if I can just do it. And I have had eggplants grow before. So that's possible. Musk melon. I'm kind of, that's kind of up and down for me. Uh, okra grows really well here. In fact, okra is a perennial, shockingly, down here in the south because I've grown it and then I've cut it back and it's just grown back. Basil, yes. More okra. Cilantro, haven't done. Bee balm, uh, this is kind of like that horse mint, I think it is. This grows really well here. Teddy bear sunflowers, oh, just all the excitement. Um, blue, I don't know if I've ever grown this blue spire no blue spice basil blue spice and then i got a jillion agastache which i know grow here but i don't know if these kinds so i've got almost every type that they sell this i don't know if i'm going to try to grow that i don't know if i want it but um agastache some more hyssop agastache just all the agastaches i think i ordered every single kind that they had and this i've never grown before basil cardinal mm, that looks good this I think I've tried to grow and it didn't work out. So that's all my hopes and dreams in a box, y'all, for um, this spring. Look at these ke little kale se seedlings that I've got. They've gotten stronger. I'm, I'm very happy about that because uh, they looked so pathetic before. And now I think they're going to make it. I need to just pot them out. Can you see how the flowers on this coral nymph salvia are just glowing? They're just glowing they look like they're lit from within i'm loving that y'all i don't i'm gonna have those you know i've already got them almost everywhere every, in the garden but i'm gonna have a ton of them i just love their airiness and they're super easy to grow from seed like i have so many of them just growing around the garden and you know and the armadillos haven't dug them all up so it's a miracle i think it's time to spread some anise hyssop or agastache seeds um I had a ton of them growing last year and then I saved a ton of them. So I'm going to sprinkle these out around the garden. Right now this area is just so bare and sad and I know that these agastache seeds would really enjoy this space right here. So I am going to toss a bunch of them out and see what happens. Oh y'all, this is my arch nemesis, apple mint. This thing gave me such a fright last year and it has not given up. It's still kind of entwined in the roots of this Amistad salvia. I never was able to get it out because I would have had to have killed the plant, but I'm gonna have to fight this forever, I guess. Big mistake. Don't ever plant apple mint um, in the yard. Look how big and thick and strong and sturdy this root is. And it will dig down uh, two feet down and go straight out and just invade everywhere. I wanted to tell y'all about this awesome garden writer that I found and kind of the story behind it. Um, her name is Pam Pinnock and she has a website called Digging. She um, gardens in Austin, Texas. And what's funny is um, if y'all know Joe, J-O, Joe's TX uh, garden on YouTube, she uh, really likes Penelope Hobhouse, who is a um, gardener from England. And Penelope designed a garden in Austin, Texas. And so I wanted to see it. And so I looked it up online and I found that Pam Pinnock had um, visited it. And uh, then I discovered Pam Pinnock's amazing gardening um, website. And I really recommend it because it is just so chock full of gorgeous gardens and great advice. This book that she wrote, The Water Saving Garden, is incredible. I was just looking through it today. So um, if you want to go on this website, uh, you will just have hours of fun. 
I thought I'd show you the actual um, website names, www.pinnick.net. She's got so many cool garden um, uh, tours and she's photographed them. She's been all over the U.S. so there's something for everyone um, as far as gardening goes. This is something that happens every year and I always forget about it and so I thought I would document it so that I will remember. So I will cut back these vinca but you can see where the dark spots are on the sidewalk and you can see how far they were growing and uh, I always forget how wide the sidewalk is until I cut them back and uh, so when I after I cut them back you can see there are just jillions of seeds in here so I'll sweep them up and then I will sprinkle them throughout the yard uh, so that vinca can just grow wherever they feel like it as long as the you know armadillos don't dig it up but the cutest thing is my husband gets so excited when I clear off the sidewalk and he comes out here and he pressure washes it pressure washes the daylights out of it makes it look brand new again he loves having a clean sidewalk and I sure wish that you know I could let him have one all the time but you know we've got to have butterflies so in the winter time he gets to have a clean sidewalk and uh, in the summer I let the garden just take over but um yeah so that's something that happens every year that I think I need to document so I can remember it for next year <laughs> I may have done a boo-boo y'all I went to dig this uh, rosemary up out of the yard to put in this pot because I wanted one and instead of getting a root ball with dirt this came out so I wonder if it's gonna be a miracle if it survives and uh, we're just gonna see I'm gonna video this and We'll keep tabs on it. All right, I've got the rosemary potted up. Hopefully it will survive. It was kind of living under the shadow of a giant lemongrass. So I'm gonna put it in kind of a little bit of a shady spot and slowly drag it out so that it will get full sun. But um, hopefully it'll live. Another plant rescue that I'm gonna do is this lemongrass. It's kind of growing in the middle of um, a path. I was gonna let it live here um, but and I had a theory that the armadillos would leave it alone but as you can see they are not going to here is where they've been digging and here so I'm gonna dig this lemongrass up and uh, secure it in a pot for a little while and then in the spring I will plant it out where I want it to grow it's another really misty morning and I think it's official I think Gentle Hermione is my favoriteest rose. It's just so pretty. Look at this one especially. Oh, so gorgeous. Look at this gorgeous, generous gardener rose. Isn't it lovely? And it's, it's huge, it smells amazing. I was gonna move it because I had planted it here. I have James Galway and Generous Gardener right here on the edge of the arbor. But then I had all these buds on it and I, I just can't move it. I'm gonna trim it back and try to train it a little bit more responsibly this summer. And once again, Gentle Hermione is just making me so crazy with how gorgeous it is. Just glowing and smelling so incredible. See how the one on the bottom has got that pink color to it and the ones that have been open for a while have turned white. Isn't that interesting? I gotta show y'all this nasty, I don't know what it is, but it's affecting my um, petunias. Do you see this? white gooey stuff I don't know what that is but this is just nasty and it's on my white petunias I mean not white petunias my petunias and then it also got on my Thai basil here it is up close on vinca I don't know if that's like bug spittle or I don't know what it is it's nasty I've just been cutting the pieces off that have this and throwing them away and the Thai basil it's got this gross stuff on it and when I come near it, 
some little tiny things that I can't really even see fly away. So I'm guessing that they're the culprits. These monarchs are being rather annoying because they won't let me get very close to them. I'm having to try to sneak. Ugh. There are about half a dozen monarchs out here right now at this moment, but I can't get them all on video. And also, every time I try to get closer, they all fly away. These monarchs are not very obliging. That one looks kind of funny, doesn't it? I can't wait to hear about all the adventures that y'all are planning on having and are having now, and um, all the interesting seeds and plants that y'all are planting, planning, planting on planting. <laughs> oh, but y'all have a great week. God bless y'all. Talk to you later.